Hi, my name is Greg Campbell, Chief Architect at Acaveo. Today I want to show you how you can use the advanced searching capability that's built into the Acaveo Data Classifier product. And to do that, I'm going to go down to the Searches node. And, and essentially what this node does is expose an advanced search interface that uses the SharePoint Query Web Service. So this is using the same search indices that a regular SharePoint search would, uses, would use, but this just is exposing the full power of that search interface in a way that really isn't exposed in other products. So let me just, just work through some examples here and we'll work from a very simple query up to a very advanced query that would be very difficult to structure in any other product. So we'll start with just doing the, the most simple query, which is I'm just looking for the word fun uh, anywhere in my enterprise. So I enter fun, I run the search, and in this case I get back about um, 973 results. And I can browse through and I can see what all those results are and there's some fields that have been included here by defaults. Um, with data classifier, if I'm applying policies in my environment, I can additionally restrict to a particular policy those results. So for example, I can say I'm looking for anything that meets the phone numbers policy. So I it, it, ha it had a phone number within it and we detected that during indexing time and flagged it with the phone numbers policy. And it also has the word fun. So I can go ahead and run that search again. And now I'm only getting back about 223 results. Again, I can scroll through the results. I can see what they are. Um, so this is this is neat. And then I can, if I want to go further, I can sort of do searches within my search results. And, and these are really instant and dynamic filters that I can apply. So I can just start typing here, for for example, the word Sally in the author field. And you'll see it, it automatically um, limited my results to the things that met whatever I typed in there. Uh, I can do that. Similar things, for example, on the size field. I could go ahead and I could say, well, it's got to be greater than, and I could say uh, 3,000 bytes. And so that would go ahead and, and limit my results further. Okay, So I, I have all these different filters that I can apply instantaneously within my search results to, to limit things down. I'll just go ahead and remove this filter for now. Um, so that's really powerful. The other thing that I can do is I can choose what the columns are that I want to come back. So there's a, there's a large number of columns that exist within the index, uh, many of which are retrievable. I can simply click on the columns um, tab. It gives me a list of all of the columns that exist, all of the managed properties that exist in my search schema, and I can choose which ones I'm interested in, in having pulled back. And by default, there's a few that have already been selected, but we can add, for example, let's add file type um, as something we want to add. And I'll just hit OK. If I go ahead and run that search again, so now you'll see that the file type field has also been added. So I could add any other fields that I wanted as well to, to build out this result set as, as much as I wanted. Um, another really powerful feature with this search interface is the ability to perform a really dynamic grouping. So I can take a field, uh, for example, let's grab the author field. I can drag it up into this grouping area and just release it. And it'll automatically group all of my results by the field that I drag. So in this case, case we dragged up the author column. And so it's going to group it by, by author. And so I can look, for example, at the author brewery. Um, I can expand that and I can see those specific records. And this isn't limited to only a single level. I can, I can do multiple levels as well. So I can group first by author, and then underneath author, I can additionally group um, by type. So in this case, if I expand that again, well, in this case, all the file types were underneath that brewery were, were of EML types. But maybe if I go up to the, the blank author, well, here that one had all text. Um, so you can see how I can um, just start to really get a handle on some of the, the higher level structure um, that exists. I can in fact group by both of these at the same time as well if I, if I drag it up to the same level. Oops. Now it's going to group both by file type and by author as a single unit so I'd get results directly underneath. Okay, So I, I really have a lot of options in terms of how I'm grouping this and again I can add any columns that I want and then group by those columns to really get whatever view of the information I'm most interested in. Okay, so that is is some of the the sort of core features that this search interface offers. Another thing I can do, which is very powerful with this search interface, is I can actually build really complex queries um, that would be very difficult to do through the native search interfaces. So if I hit the property restrictions, what I'm presented with is is essentially a blank logic tree that I can fill in however I want to express the search that I want to run. And my building blocks for this logic tree are group filters, which are ands and ors, and they can be not ands and not ors. 
uh, and it is um, and property filters where I'm saying a property has to meet a certain value so for example if I had a property filter what I get is a list of all of the properties all the managed properties that exist in my search schema and I can build rules on any of them so for example I'll, I'll select the size and I can say well the size has got to be um, greater than than 5,000 uh, that's in bytes okay and but then I can additionally say and also at the same time the author so we'll go up and we'll find the author property the author needs to contain uh, let's say star sal star Okay, so it has to, has to contain something that looks like that. So I can go ahead and, and accept this. This is a fairly simple one, but I can go ahead and accept that and run my search. And you'll see I get a much more focused set of results. So you can see the author does contain what I was looking for and that the size is greater than what I had specified. So, you know, I've done something very specific there in, a very, in terms of having a very targeted search, but I can get uh, much more advanced in terms of then nesting, um, for example, an or underneath here and then setting up a couple of conditions underneath this that were based on properties and so really it's um, there is no limit here it, whatever the, the logic is that whatever you're trying to find if you can express it in in business logic which is pretty much always the case then you can express it in this logic tree in a very simple and clean way um, and have it applied instantaneously to to a search result so this is this is extremely powerful this is a capability that you're not going to find in other products it's uh, it's unique to our offering Okay, so I'll cancel out of there. So that's that's kind of an overview of, of the, the ways that you can search, the ways that you can quickly find information with Data Classifier. Um, the next thing is when you actually want to um, export or report on a search result. So we have the ability built in to the search interface to export results. So for example, I have my four results. I could export them either to a CSV or an XML file. Uh, and it, what it'll do is it'll export exactly the columns that you have retrieved. So if I want to export additional columns, well, all I would do is I would go to my column selector, I would select a bunch of additional columns, I'd add them to my search results, and then I would go and run my export. And it'll just dump it into a CSV or, or an XML uh, format that would be consumable, consumable by, by another product. The other thing that I can do is run reports. So the first report that I can run is what we call a simple report. If I run that, really all this is going to do is give me a summary of the search that I ran and how many results came back. And so you can see it's it's summarizing what exactly has happened. So it's saying the query is fun. It's been restricted to the policy phone numbers. It has these property restrictions. This is the tree that's been applied, the logic tree. Here are the columns that came back. There are no current filters. Those were those things I put in the grid itself and it's not currently being grouped and it tells me the time that I ran the search and the number of results that were there but I can also run what we call a detail report a detailed report and if I run a detailed report it'll give me the same information at the start but then it will actually also give me the raw table that has the actual content in it so I get everything um, that I need there okay there's also the ability if I'm grouping so let me go ahead and let me um, let me just clear some of these filters. I'll just remove all this. Okay, so we've sort of blanked out those filters and I'll run the search again. So I'll get back several results and I'll do a group by author. So now what I get with, with the group report is I get the same search query parameters, the stats, and then I get my results and you can see it's, it's the actual grouped by authors with the number of items. So I get that higher level overview um, of my results. So those are all, and these are all savable and printable. Um, you can save it, it'll save as an HTML. Um, you can print directly um, from the interface if you wanted to print. Um, you could print it out as a PDF if you wanted or export as a PDF through that print interface if you wanted. So all those capabilities exist within the product. So that's, I mean, that's some of the capabilities you get with, with this search interface. Uh, it's extremely powerful, it's very unique, and there's value here even if even doing searches outside of your data classifier policies just to be able to express the more complex property restrictions to uncover information in your enterprise um, it's, it's a very powerful capability uh, so thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next video